Hi. <laughs> yes, and Sarah's joining us. She's there, Keener. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for joining us. This is Karen of Court Prep, and I'm called the Admissions Insider because my students, when they come and learn with me and Garth and uh, some other fantastic instructors, they get accepted into their first choice colleges usually. If not the first, then definitely their second choice. So, and I see Sarah just joined us, and she's one of these students who's very keen. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi, Sarah. And tonight. We're going to do an interview with Anthony DiGiovanni, and he studied at Sheridan College, I believe. Is that right, Anthony? I did, yeah. I spent some time at Sheridan, uh, and I studied privately in different online programs and tons of uh, Great. self education, too. Great. We're going to hear all about that. So, and the reason I want you guys to see this guy's work is because he is teaching a workshop for us at Port Prep's Art and Animation Summer Camp, uh, which starts on Monday. We've got an exciting lineup of things for our open house day. But Anthony is going to be teaching a two-day workshop on August 6th and 7th. So I thought some of you might want to see uh, some of his work. Anthony is a concept artist and a digital painter. So Anthony is going to show us some work of his first, tell us a little bit about his education and his career, and he's actually going to show us a quick little bit of demos, like a bit of how a digital painting or a concept piece is put together, so you can get a sneak peek into what he's going to be teaching us. So, And you'll be able to join in either in person, like Sarah who just tuned in. She's coming to study with us from Ottawa and studying uh, here with us in Guelph. And you might choose to come and drive to Guelph or travel here to be with us for two weeks of intensive lessons to prepare for making an animation or illustration portfolio. Um, or you could tune in digitally, just like we're doing right now with Google Hangouts. So let's have a look at Anthony's work. Can't wait to see this. All right, thank you. So you've got the floor now, Anthony. Okay, um, so this is my website. Um, I'm just going to run through a few pieces on here. Uh, pull them up. So this is a, a personal piece here, um, just exploring some different things. Uh, basically, the work I've done, the work I do is illustration primarily. Um, I've done some visual development, and I'm uh, interested in concept work. Uh, I'm definitely moving my portfolio in that direction, and I've studied with a, a lot of different concept guys. Um, so I'll run through some work. This was a, a last big job I did. It was a big illustration job for a, a band. Um, in pieces like this, I, I really I try to push things in a direction that uh, is conceptual, um, where it, you know it could be almost to the point of an environment uh, keyframe for a game, but it's also very illustrative. It can hold its own as a, an album cover. So these guys were great. They uh, they wanted a painting for each song on their 12-track album and a cover. Um, they spared no expense. So they rock. So, uh, yeah, just different techniques used in these. I mean, I, I really like to cover in the workshop um, a lot of a lot of the different things that, that can go into creating things like this. Some of them use different techniques, uh, but there's a lot of similarities across the board. And I'm going to show you some of the process as well um, so you can see how I, I kept things feeling somewhat cohesive. So, so Anthony, yeah. so you're, what, can you tell us what is the definition of a concept artist? So a, a concept artist is uh, it's really a, it's a concept designer. Um, I think you, is what you really call it because you're designing um, different concepts for you know different purposes. Uh, whether it's for film, designing um, how a set could look, uh, how characters might look. It, it can get into costume design, um, video games. It's a big part, uh, and it's it's basically exploring things quickly and uh, in a lot cheaper way than it is to explore them in, in say, 3D, which is a, a bit more of an, an intensive process, um, where, where a concept artist can make 
sketches quickly and lots of them and explore lots of different ideas. Uh, and then from there you can move into the next phase where you're actually modeling these things and, um, and bringing them to life, so to speak. Um, so yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of designing visually or explaining and exploring how, how things will work and appear um, in, in generally in entertainment. But it has other purposes, you know, uh, like theme park design. There's concept art for theme park design. Uh, so yeah, lots of different uses. And so what do you study if you want to become a concept artist? And that, that's a good question. Um, what did you study? What did I study? Well, for me, um, my track was more il il uh, illustration. So that was, that was kind of my primary field of study. And there's a ton of overlap. There's, I guess the big difference between concept art and illustration is when you're illustrating, the, the image is the point. You know, it's a, a beautiful composition, and everything in that picture, um, the aesthetic is the point of the picture. Uh, or maybe you want to tell a story, but but your your end result is that image. Uh, in concept art, the end result is going to be something else. So your image is a means to an end. Uh, it, it's exploratory. Um, and so, so in saying that, while I studied illustration and I learned all the basics of um, making art and composition and uh, design and all of these different things. It was kind of after that that I decided, you know, it, I, I really enjoy the idea of, of designing things in a, in a little bit of a more functional way or um, a little more intensive and, and really, you know, creating ideas instead of just pretty pictures. Uh, wow. so, so to study, I think that the important thing is to know all your art fundamentals. You have to know those. And um, you know, and I've some of the best concept artists in the industry have said it. Um, you know, I, I studied with a guy who said it. Uh, animation training is really whatever you want to do in art. It's really the best of the best because you you have to you really have to understand form and how to manipulate it and how light works. You have to understand all of these things in such an intense way um, that it's like you you become a master of your tools. And once you have mastered these tools, you can really apply them in any direction. Um, so animation school doesn't necessarily limit you to animation. It's just a, a really great kind of boot camp kind of style uh, training for art in general and design. OK. So then did you study, which school did you study at? So which program did you study at? I did art fundamentals at Sheridan. Um, so I didn't actually do illustration or animation at Sheridan. I did art fundamentals. And uh, I was a little older. I, like, I, I'd done some different things. I, I'd actually started in theater, um, in acting. That was kind of my uh, my passion out of high school. And it just wasn't working out. Um, and I'd always drawn. I've always loved to uh, create pictures and come up with ideas. Uh, so I went and I did Art Fundamentals at Sheridan. And that was great because it got me those fundamentals down. Um, and then I decided to try something different. I had applied to animation and I, I got my portfolio in and I was successful, I was accepted, um, but just the circumstances of my life and uh, finances and different things, I decided that I wanted to try a different route. Um, so I went and studied uh, online with uh, an illustrator named Greg Manchester. That was my next move. And that was a big, uh, big, big game changer for me because he really opened my eyes to uh, a lot of different things that I hadn't considered before. Um, so I think it's, I really wish, I, I really wish I could have gone to the animation school. It just, it wasn't right for me at the time. Um, but I think the, the main point is whether you go to school or you don't, it's really up to you to drive your education. Um, because even in school, no one's going to do it for you. So you have to kind of go through and, and find what you're looking for uh, in, in either way and really, and really get what you need. So, um, so that's, that's how I studied. And since then, I've, I've, you know, I basically find uh, with the Internet, it's really amazing because I can find artists who are, have been my favorite artists for years. And you know, some of them have recorded tutorials or some of them offer workshops. Uh, correspondence so I can uh, do that too and, and kind of brush up on different things. So 
um, education is is great now. I mean, you, you could you have so many options. So uh, it's it's just great. I mean, it, I I wish I I was uh, had these things in high school before uh, because maybe you know maybe I would have taken a different route and actually had the ability to go to school full time and uh, and do it that way. So yeah. So you had studied um, with one individual online, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah, and that was. Did you continue there. to study with other on other online platforms? For sure. To continue to develop your skills. Can you tell us a little bit about what your education path was? And then I'm curious to see what your career's been like. Uh, like we're seeing a lot of amazing images here. Yeah. Are these personal pieces or are these jobs that you've done? What's yeah, so, your client list like? So first so I want to hear yeah. the education path and then your career path. Sure. Um, so yeah, I guess to summarize the education path, it was, um, it was university for acting for a couple of years. And then uh, so I, I got some university education under my belt, which is also important because you have to bring um, – other experience uh, other than art to inform your work. Uh, so it's always good to be interested in, in the world and other things. Uh, so I went from there to Sheridan College for uh, fundamentals, where that's where I kind of brushed up on my basics. And from there I did, it was called the Smarter Art School, um, and it was a mentorship, and it, I believe it was in its first year of development, and I had this opportunity to study with one of my favorite illustrators, Greg Manchess, uh, who's great, and he met he met with me too, and you know, we, I was able to pick his brain, and uh, I learned a ton. From there, um, I basically took a lot of that knowledge, and uh, I have a huge library, <laughs> so I've I've really I'm really huge. I've I've always been big on self study, um, and it, self study is kind of an unfortunate predicament. I wouldn't really wish it on anyone. Because uh, it's it's sort of a tough way to go, but sometimes you know, like I said, you do what you have to do, and if that's what you have to do, you have to make it work. Uh, if you're if you're passionate about something, so I went from there um, to other other online programs. I just recently finished uh, an environment design program through um, CGMA, uh, is a, another another online platform with an artist named Aaron Lamonic, who's a uh, a concept artist. He works for Naughty Dog in in, um, in the game industry, and he's a, another great guy. So these these workshops are just huge, uh, huge level ups um, to learn from from big names in the industry. Aaron, what's Aaron's last name? Aaron Lamonic. No. Yeah, Aaron. Uh, punch him in here. I uh, spelled it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. They're and great guys to check out. Very different work, uh, and that's the okay. thing. I mean, when you, I guess, when you go to school, when you get into animation after doing preparing your portfolio, and you get in and you get there, um, it's a it's a vast landscape of possibilities visually. Uh, I mean, you have to get your fundamentals down. Uh, I mean, you kind of have to get your fundamentals down before going to animation school, or or it's going to be tough to get in. Uh, hence the beauty of a program like this. Um, but once you're there, there's it's there's so many artists and there's so much so much things to, uh, so many things to um, to head towards, I guess, visually and, and different styles and, and um, uh, tastes. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, check out some of these guys and so many others. In my workshop, I, I plan to kind of drop a lot of resources on uh, different you know paths of self-study to supplement education or before or after or during or, or whatever. Yeah, so let me pull up a bit of uh, some other work. Great. So this is, uh, so basically these are some of the works I showed you. These are the first, basically the rough pass, the, the kind of the pitch, the pitch that I presented. Can you see that on my screen? Yeah. Yes, I see it. Yeah, so these are these were basically like um, a part of my process is I start with thumbnail sketches um, just to get my ideas out, and then I take my thumbnails to a kind of a more refined, usually a value study, something like this. And these are what I I basically sent the guys to say, um, you know, is this is this cool? So uh, sorry, you asked about my career. Um, this was a job that that I worked on. 
uh, like this was for a band. Uh, this was just a big one that that kind of had the opportunity to do a lot of paintings for uh, some some of my better work. And uh, since then, I've worked uh, in a little bit of animation, visual development, um, or creating assets. Uh, so production art. Um, I've done. I have a book cover commission I'm working on, uh, and I'm and I'm working currently working on a job for an advertising agency, a really big advertising agency, um, doing some uh, some illustration work for for web. So uh, it's interesting. The work kind of comes from all kinds of different directions, uh, and and yeah. So uh, I'm back to this. Uh, my process. Is uh, I, I want to show this because this is kind of the stage that I'll be using to um, to discuss to kind of give you the Photoshop 101 in my workshop because there's there's a lot of things that I'm doing even at this stage that Photoshop really lends itself to and it's it's why I really like to um, to get into Photoshop at this stage I used to do it on pencil and paper and it's so much quicker and it's so much easier to make changes. Here and to go to a finished piece, a lot of these I actually would just blow up and uh, and start painting right on them. So I would use them as a foundation if they were approved. So some other work, some other examples of kind of visual development work. There's like uh, some character design, and this was actually an assignment for Aaron Lamonic's class, uh, exploring visual development in. Uh, this would be, I guess, in, in an animation sense, uh, exploring shape language and, and how you would fit things into a scene cohesively, um, how you would take a scene like this and basically and uh, break it down and, and really design your elements out. Uh, let's see. This is, again, more, more visual development, similar to the other one. I used a very similar technique. Um, definitely want to get into this, uh, the different the different things that Photoshop can offer um, to execute things like this in a very organized uh, and a very efficient manner. Um, I really like to share those tools with you guys. These are some finished pieces from, from a workshop uh, in environment design. These are like um, so this would be basically from the value compositions and jump into different color options and lighting and just playing with different scenes. Uh, actually use 3D in here to, um, to mock up some of this architecture and then paint over it. Won't be getting into the 3D stuff, but uh, definitely going to give you the rundown on Photoshop. And here's just a process of one of my, my personal pieces uh, that I showed on my website. And this one, I used a different, this one I kind of jumped right in because it was a personal piece. Uh, and I just started painting. And I want to get into the different brushes I used um, and different ways to get different uh, blending modes in Photoshop, uh, masking options, uh, a lot of different things that I want to touch on. You know, what I think is interesting when I see that image is it's really the same kind of process as painting by hand, yeah, like the way to block in a painting um, with underpainting layers first. It's it's really the same thing. It's just your brush is a digital brush. That's exactly it, Karen. Yeah. It's uh, the illustrator Greg Manchus, who I studied with, is an oil painter. He's still he's still an oil painter. He's never never gone digital, um, and he's he's the best of the best, really. Um, and, my, and I'm really passionate about painting in oil. I just I kind of got a late start in it. So while I love it, um, it digital is kind of where it's my home. <laughs> you know, being being the age that I am and kind of growing up when I did, I've been experimenting with digital for I guess t ten years now. So uh, although I haven't gotten serious about art until about the last five, uh, it's um, it's yeah, it's I'm really comfortable digitally. But I definitely do oil paintings. I've I've done quite a few commissions and. Uh, and when I have time, I definitely get into that too. So that that informs this that process. Yeah, I can see that. I'm I'm an oil painter too. So. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Nothing like oil. Uh, these are just another few few random pieces. Some some quick paintings, quick sketches, and then this guy here. I thought maybe this would be interesting. There was a contest. Uh, Industrial Light and Magic was hosting uh, for a Star Wars based contest. Uh, that's the studio that did all the the concept work for Star Wars. So I. 
I put one, I put a scene together, but you needed two, and I just didn't quite make the deadline. So I've had a chair. Oh, anyway, so. you right. Yeah, yeah. My son was just <laughs> born like the day of the <laughs> the competition. He was two le- two weeks late, so I was kind of uh, on my toes. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of a little rundown of of my work there, and hopefully that gives you guys an idea of the direction that the workshop is going to be taking. Yeah. Um. So what kind of things would you be showing the students? Do you have a few examples? Yeah, definitely. So I I, I, I kind of set up a little demo here. Uh, I didn't want to do it from scratch because it'd be really tedious. So I just really quickly blocked in. Um, so this is this is the approach, like I said, that I would have taken with uh, some of those monolith paintings, um, a lot of the other things, and that's it's a, a almost a graphic design approach. Uh, if you look at it, I'm sure you, you notice that it's uh, it's very graphic. They're all flat shapes, but the, uh, and I and I learned this approach um, from a couple of of artists actually who work for Naughty Dog, uh, co-workers of of Aaron who I took the workshop with, and they have videos out, tutorials, and they they talked about this technique, and I really liked it um, because for one main reason I really liked it is is that I use a, a Wacom tablet, a, an Intuos tablet, and it's uh, it's I've been using one for about 10 years, so I'm very comfortable with it. But it's still very challenging to uh, to drop really nice line work like you would with a pencil and paper. Mm-hmm. So uh, what I really like about this approach is that it's shape based. So what I can do is, you know, I can basically I can build shapes, and they don't have to be perfect on the first shot because I can cut back into them. Uh, and I can make them pretty that way. So I think it's a huge advantage when you don't have uh, graceful tools to work in bigger shapes. That you, and that's something about Photoshop that's beautiful. It's almost like sculpting. You can you can cut in and out. Uh, so you know. So what I did, I'll just break down how I did this. So I did a really quick, quick, really rough sketch. Um, I had an idea. I've been reading uh, Dune. I don't know if you're familiar with the novel Dune, but it's a, a sci-fi novel, and it's a it's about this desert planet. And uh, so I just thought, okay, I'll, I'll throw together something um, desert-based. So I grab. I thought, okay, let's make a little dude in a sandstorm. Um, so what I did basically is I did this little sketch, and then what I always do is grab reference. So I have a huge reference folder uh, on my computer. So I put together this little reference board. Um, with all the kind of different elements of the things I want to include. So I'm going to cover a bit of that um, in the workshop because that's super important. And and then I jump into this, or sorry, I have the sketch. And then what I start to do, just really quickly, um, I always drop a little bit of a perspective grid because that's key. And uh, then what I start to do on top of my sketch is... Um, I layer, I, on separate layers, I'll start to, to build in my, so let me open the sketch so you can see. I'll start to lay in all of my, um, my basically foreground, midground elements going back into space on separate layers so that I can use something called uh, clipping masks to, uh, to take advantage of, or, or to sorry, to circumvent, I guess, the limitations of, of my materials being the tablet and clumsy line work and clumsy brush strokes. So this is great because what you're showing here, I mean, this is the fundamentals I'm I'm always um, teaching people about. Yeah. So for anybody who's watching this, did you notice he had his rough sketch? Re- figured it out and then the graphics simplified shapes in different values and then increased those value changes. So it's like Mm -hmm. before you start building in color, you want to come up with a value study basically. And and I noticed how you're leading the eye into what you want to see. Yeah, it's a really really simple composition. Uh, you got that basic S, right? It's a super simple but effective kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's here what I really like about uh, an approach like this is that I can design my shape. I always find it's better to go from hard edges to soft. Uh, maybe that's just me, and I kind of get too carried away uh, when I'm painting. But 
I find when you work like this in a sort of graphic design sense, you create a really strong graphic foundation um, to build an image on top of. So now if I start going in with crazy brushwork and everything, I always have this really strong, and I know this composition is working um, to kind of go back to, and I can soften my edges at the end. I could literally paint this whole thing with hard edges and it will look mediocre and then go in and soften a third of the edges and it'll just go to the next level. Um, wow. And just selectively. Yeah, right? so you know what's kind of... cool about what you're saying? Um, that, and this is something that we always taught at Sheridan too, is we need form first and detail second. Yes. So you've got your structure that you can hang color, detail, yeah. soft edges, whatever you want. And the interesting thing that you said too, the two-dimensional design, this is something that Mike L. Murphy from Warner Brothers, he's teaching uh, the five top studio skills for a successful career in filmmaking, whether it's visual effects, animation, or live film, on our open house day. It's so exciting to have you know, a big animator like that that's worked on blockbuster films like Lord of the Rings and um, Iron Man and Furious and Meet the Robinsons and Robots and Harry Potter and all these fantastic films. And one of the things, he was one of the first sort of CG animators. And he said he got hired a lot because he was both trained classically as an animator and in 3D. And he said what he would do is what you do there. He said he'd actually take a dry erase marker and draw on his screen the two-dimensional design and then he'd make the 3D um, animation like fit into uh -huh. that into that two-dimensional plane so he, because of course the screen, even though we experience it today in, as a 3D mm -hmm. um, space, it's still still a two-dimensional screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I love that you're doing that. I want to hear more about it. What do you do next? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that he would he would compose how he was comfortable and then make his 3D fit to that. So that, that just really tells you that the tools are just that, right? They're just tools, and it's the, That's what uh, he says, it's, too. It's, it's the yeah. fundamentals uh, that really matter. And I, I, that's, I, that's a great point. Too. That's how I interviewed him. Amazing one hour before. <laughs> he says a lot of the same yeah. things you're saying. Well, it's, it's, it, it, because it's universal, right? And, and it's really, uh, I think, I'd like to just point out that the design, I, designing everything, that's something that uh, Mr. Greg Manchester was really, really really adamant about was that nothing happens by accident in a picture. Um, every element, everything is designed, it's on purpose, and it works towards your focal point. It's, it all has to tell the story. Um, so nothing is, is haphazard or careless, it's all careful, and the, the effort is taking that very precise, very careful planning and work and making it look easy or accidental or off the cuff, right? That's where the real work is. So. Um, it's a, it's a huge challenge. It's a you know it's a lifetime's journey, but that's the the thrill I think for me. Okay, so I, I'm actually I'll even um, so these shapes I'm going to say right off the bat they're not they're not uh, as clean as I would get them. Uh, so I would I would really go in and I would look. I have my reference up here on another screen, and uh, what I would do basically is is. I would go in these shapes and really start to kind of massage them into what I want them to be and look for that variety and uh, I'm always striving to get something that feels organic uh, because I think naturally your mind wants to make re repetitive patterns. Like when I go down this cliff, I think my natural inclination would be to just kind of go down, you know, and just kind of do that and you see like a lot of beginner artists will be like rocks, okay, so that's a cliff. And it, you just kind of get this boring sort of pattern. So that's where the reference is so key, is I can look at, at how erosion naturally affects rocks and find things that I wouldn't actually think of. Like I see in my reference, there's you know these are really sharp, jagged cliffs, but there's actually a curve here because that face was exposed and, and the wind has kind of eaten away at it. Um, and that's something, again, you're asking about concept art education. It's really, I think, knowing your fundamentals and then being so curious and so interested in how things work and nature and machinery and, and everything, right? Um, I think that's that's really why the education, there is now education specifically for that. 
Um, but I mean, Sheridan is such a good school. Uh, I'm just speaking locally, but there's you know art center teaches are great. Uh, that's I know that's a huge one. I wish I I could have gone there, but. Uh, Sheridan is, if you learn animation in Sheridan and you're curious about the world and you're fascinated by things there's, and, and you study them, there's no reason why you couldn't take what you've learned and apply it to concept art. So, yeah, so basically I would massage these shapes until I was really happy with them. Uh, right now they're okay for our purposes, so I'm going to kind of get into uh, what I, part of what I'm going to be teaching. So. I'm going to go over brushes. Um, so these, I have tons of brushes. These are all other people's brushes, and everyone is is really uh, free with their brushes, which is great. Like no one's, no one seems to be too <laughs> too greedy with them. Like everyone's sharing them, and I'll give you resources to find all those free brushes. Um, eventually, I'd really like to make my own. Uh, I just need a little bit of free time. So I, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, right now brushes aren't the most important thing. It's more like we we're saying the fundamentals. Um, so right now I like to use other people's. Uh, this is a guy named Ross Tran. I got these brushes from, so I bought some of his stuff. Another great artist, Ross Tran. Uh, he has a, a Patreon where he's constantly updating and um, teaching different illustration and concept uh, How do you ideas. Spell his last name? It's T R A N. Really fun guy. He's got a YouTube. He's a he's a really interesting guy, and he does really great work. Uh, I actually just got two of his prints in the mail, and I'm pumped. <laughs> Great. Yeah. yeah. So, so, if uh, people yeah. can see the chat on the side, we've got so um, people that Anthony's mentioned: Greg Manches, Aaron Lemonic, Lemonic, Lemonic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Red Engine is a great school you can study with online. Nomen. Uh, CalArts has some great um, programs in entertainment design. Uh, there's a great um, website called CG Cookie. has some excellent, very affordable um, digital art training. And then there's FZU. Um, oh, yeah. Feng, Feng Zhu, yeah, something Feng Zhu. like there's that in Feng Singapore. Zhu's concept art uh, and bodies. <laughs> and he's, then Ross the Tran, you said? Uh, what yeah. else have we got here? CGMA and Smart School. Those are two that I, I started with. Really good. Yeah, there's tons of resources um, to get your skills up. And, and uh, I, I don't think it ever really ends, and I love how accessible everything is now. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to just, I know we, we're kind of probably getting to the, the end here, but I'm going to run over just a, a, few, a few of the techniques that I, I'm going to cover in the workshop. Uh, one of them, so I, I mentioned brushes. I'm going to go deeper into that. But one of the things I'm going to talk about is clipping masks in Photoshop. And basically, what I've done here, you can see that this is on a separate layer. So when I'm painting this shape, I'm painting it. And when I'm cutting into it, I'm using the eraser. Um, so I'm not actually painting the, the value in the background. I'm, I'm erasing so that I have basically a, like an alpha. Uh, it, it's on a, a blank background. So what I can then do is make a new layer above it. And you see, if I hold Alt, it clips to that layer. There's that little arrow there. Um, and what that does is it basically uh, it creates a mask so that anything I paint, I'll use red so you can really see it. Even though I'm painting past it, it's only going to stay on that layer. So I'm sure you can see how powerful that can be. Uh, because now what I can do is I, I have my fundamental uh, kind of uh, architecture here for the rocks, but I have a different idea for my lighting. So now what I can do is is basically this uh, this kind of value gradation into the background has established the darkest darks at each plane of the perspective. So uh, as we get to that middle ground, you know, the darkest dark on that mountain uh, generally is going to be that that kind of medium gray. Um, but because we're closer and there's less atmosphere, we're going to get really dark in the front. So what I can then do is basically paint my light, and I can design with light. And, I, and I've already thought about this, and that's why I set it up how I did. Um, but what I really like, and I, I, I saw this reference photo, um, and it kind of inspired me, is 
kind of light. It's going to be a sandstorm, but I'm going to have right before the sandstorm hits, the last kind of rays of sun are going to be streaming through. So I'm going to make a clipping mask on this cliff. We'll start there. And basically what I can do now is I can start, I'm going to go a little light, brighter on the value, is I can start painting in the light that's, that's hitting this cliff. So as you can see, I, my guy is just conveniently set up there to be silhouetted by the light on this side. Uh, and that, again, nothing is by accident, so I did consider this beforehand. Um, and this is a good example right now of me cutting back into the shapes. You know, and I'm looking at my reference too. But basically, it seems like I'm doing very, very little, but very little sometimes is, is a lot um, when it comes to design and, and uh, appealing design and clumsy design. I, I've kind of become this <laughs> a, a design fanatic ever since I discovered it was kind of the missing link uh, in my work. I flip the canvas constantly uh, just to get a fresh view, sometimes to get an angle of, of a tablet that I can't reach. Um, but yeah, graphic design or, or just design in general and, and how, how shapes are built and how they relate and negative space and, and all these things that you learn in art school but then you kind of forget to apply because you're so busy learning anatomy and all these other concepts. Um, really when I started paying attention to these things again, my work got so much better. Uh, just like amazingly better. Uh, yeah, Cause I look at old work and I'm just like, what? You know, <laughs> why? Why did I have this guy standing on just a mound of dirt in the middle of nowhere with one mountain peak randomly jutting out in the background? You know, and, and that's what comes from thinking about the what and not the, I, and, or maybe the what. The what is in what's in the scene and not how it's in the scene, and and uh, not not considering opportunities for for more interesting shapes. Because even though these are cliffs that I'm representing, they're not cliffs, they're just shapes on a page. Um, so if the shapes aren't cool, then it's not, I don't know, it's not as fun to look at, right? It's not really art, it's just copying. Um, so so yeah, I won't, I won't go too far with this, but you get the idea, right? One of the things that we talk about in one of the classes that we have that's going to be a precursor to your class so that while we're meeting in the camp before you teach, Anthony, mm -hmm. uh, the students are coming up with a story. They're going to come up with a uh, storyboard, a scene from the story. They're going to learn how to make a perspective. They're going to learn a bit about foundation painting from another painter who's an oil painter. Um, they're going to learn from, from myself about how to compose a scene so that we direct the eye in sort of a hierarchical way. Like, um, you know, if there's, like in this case, with that with the scene we're looking at from you, we have a main character and we have to make sure we look at that character mm -hmm. and feel his mood and what's happening here so that, so he's number one priority and then something else is happening in the scene that you're designing because you said there's a sandstorm. Um, so one of the things that you alluded to, you know, it wasn't by accident that the brightest contrast is right by his head that overlaps, his head is overlapping the white area. Um, so that all these things, there's a way to design it. You can see how he's putting these red lines on right now, looking at proportion, direction. You mentioned the S-curve. We're going to be looking at various things that make us look at the protagonist first, let's say, and the antagonist second, or depending on what's happening in the scene. How do we get people to look where we want them to first, second, third, and not be distracted? Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, having some artist finesse, where, like you say, it's not 
just copy work. The reference is there just for reference. We're really trying to create um, art at the same time as telling a story. There's really, it really is a designed process that can take years to learn about. It's not just can I draw and can I use my tools, but can, can I beginning. create a story yeah. and then I tell my story effectively visually. So those are a lot of the things you're going to get introduced to in our summer camp so that you'll have some of these concepts from the various artists that are teaching and really be ready for what Anthony has to teach because he's teaching on the last weekend. Mm. So it, I just love what I'm hearing from you and how it, it all fits into what everybody else has been teaching. And that's what and I was what hoping to plan before you yeah. come. I was really hoping that and I, I, I kind of looked over the course uh, catalog and thought, okay, great. Um, everyone's already going to get all of the things that <laughs> that I would talk about if I was teaching composition or, or anything else. So um, that'll be fresh in their minds, and we can really focus on the Photoshop techniques that are going to be able to to make these tools kind of sing for them. Uh, yeah, right. so uh, I'm going to leave that for now, but that's kind of where my light is going to be centered. Uh, and, and I'm always thinking about this, right? You saw those red lines. Those were... Uh, I was showing you how, like Karen was saying, everything, again, I'm not, I, this one's a little bit obvious. There are more subtle ways, but sometimes simple is good. Everything points. You'll notice all these shapes. This is literally an arrow <laughs> that points to the main character. Uh, everything there, you know, you have, you're always supporting your main elements. So even though everything's going on, I'm directing your eye uh, to what you're going to look at. You know, if, if this was going to be on a wall in a gallery, I know where your eyes going to go because I'm, I'm doing it on purpose. You have to be like a movie director. You have to um, set up the scene in such a way that they're going to look where you want, where your viewer is going to look where you want them to look to tell the story. So, um, and, and it's, again, designing. I'm, I'm designing with light and with color. Uh, not color yet, but you do, you do want to consider that as well. So I'm going to do a bit more light. Um, so the other idea I had basically was, okay, we know that there's light that's kind of coming from this direction. Um, we know that here, these are all the design shapes of what's going to be the clouds of the sandstorm. Uh, and so before that storm hits, there's some light that's shining through. And I have this big... Uh, shape here to cast a shadow across here so that we have some variety, but in front of this big shape, I'd like to have some more light that's pouring through this circle and making a nice uh, kind of, again, pointing to our main guy and instead of talking about what I'm going to show you. So, got that. I'm going to pick a different brush. Uh, no, not that one. So, this is kind of... Um, Again, with the brushes, what this is allowing me to do, you'll notice, is I can I can paint really freely, and it's not going to leave my shape, my design. So it's just such a huge, powerful thing, and really great of the the Naughty Dog artists that share this technique. Uh, they use it really well. So I've now clipped a mask to this foreground shape, and I'm going to start painting in my light. So there's a really kind of rough brush. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to paint it in just to see where I'm working, and I'm going to start to now cut back into it. So we know this shape is going to cast a shadow. And this is where I'll kind of flip the canvas because it's maybe even rotated because it's this is just not a comfortable angle for me to paint at. Um, so I'm going to rotate it so I can really get some clean lines. Because it is so much about clean lines, and, and you are you are at a disadvantage uh, when you're not, you know, painting pencil on paper because you're, that's how you learn, right? Like, you have so much, um, there's so much sensitivity with a pencil on paper, and you can really, really, especially if you train yourself, you can really make it do what you want it to do. Um, but with a tablet, you're definitely more limited Unless, of course, you have a Cintiq, and then you're pretty much good to go. But I don't, so. Yeah. Earth has one. It's <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, I know. I know. He tells me all the time. <laughs> so, that's okay. I'm, I'm working on it, but you know what? I've been using this long enough that I can I can do what I need to do with it, so I'm not too too worried. Uh, Anthony, so, yeah. 
Yeah. Are there brushes that you would recommend that the students won't just have in Photoshop that they should have they should for the workshop, before. or will it not matter? Yeah, you know what? Well, that's a great idea. Uh, what I'm going to suggest is I'll um, I'm going to send you an email then with uh, a kind of a list of resources that they could check out. Uh, I think that would work pretty well, and um, and they can download them beforehand so they have them prepared to go. Uh, because it'll be fun to play with them. Brushes really, like anything else, they're just another tool. Uh, I could paint this whole scene with a plain basic round brush in Photoshop, um, but it's it would take longer to, to get it looking gritty, and you know, you'd have to kind of go out of your way to do do that kind of thing. So definitely I'll send some links to some brushes that, that students can download. And, uh, Are they do they have to purchase them? No, or they're all they free. free. They're, everyone shares their brushes online pretty freely. No one's no one's too worried about because I think that's the thing is artists know that you know I, I could get you I could give you my brushes but you're not if you don't have the knowledge you don't have the practice you're not going to make the same thing as me even with my brushes um, they're just brushes they're just different kind of shapes oh, but that's good, great. good brushes help I mean they, it, it's because they're kind of the shortcut right like. Yeah, just just like painting with real paint. Yeah, brushes you know, matter. brushes and in matter, that case, but we do have they, to they're buy not everything, them. right? Because right. You, you know, you can paint an oil painting with uh, <laughs> with a spatula and still have a masterpiece, you know. And and an amateur could paint with the the most expensive brushes and still have a mess, right? True. So, <laughs> and I've done true. both. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I've made lots of messes. So. <laughs> I've made good ones and bad ones with spatulas and yeah, good brushes, that's but it. that's nice to know. And so, Sarah, you dropped off for a bit there and came back. Apparently, a lot of these brushes are free. That that artists just share their brushes. So yeah, I'm gonna give you links gonna to send all us a of list yeah, of some gonna, brushes that are awesome. So again, I, I'm trying to decide, and this is it's all decisions, right? It's and I'm trying to decide whether I want the light to hit him and then he casts a shadow, or maybe he's in shadow and that would be neat. Um, so it's just making these decisions and the beauty of Photoshop is you have the freedom and the for like it's so forgiving that you can experiment. What I'm doing right now is using the lasso tool. Uh, we're definitely going to talk about the lasso tool because Photoshop is uh, notoriously um, am like early Photoshop paintings are notorious for being very, very soft. Uh, it's <laughs> like they're just because hard edges, it's almost like, um, like similar to oil, uh, you have to work for hard edges. You have to be very specific about them. So this lasso tool basically creates a selection. You can see these little marching ants. Um, this is a selection uh, where if I paint, it's only going to paint within my selection. And it's going to adhere to my clipping mask. Uh, so I use this because it, it kind of lets me do a straight line across here to really get the angle I want on that shadow or that light shape and what I do if I press control H it hides it so it's not in the way but it's still there so when I start to brush it oh. stays within that selection and then you know you have the see I'm, I'm kind of feathering it a little bit that would be really hard to do without that selection because you know that that line there on my tablet is really only a couple centimeters so <laughs> It's uh, it's a challenge, so it's it, you have to use. I think that's what's great about having limited tools is that you learn the ways around it, uh, and that's that's what I want to. I think that's. I mean, it, part of it makes me glad. If I jumped into a Cintiq, I would have just done the exact same thing that I did when I was drawing on paper. But being limited kind of forced me to find uh, to act more like a designer, like a graphic designer, and to and to find shortcuts and to think differently not just paint differently but think differently and uh it's it was it was a i'm grateful that it happened that way yeah so there's a bit of designing with some light there and you know then you get some make another selection here uh i'm going to show you another tool really quick that i really like and it's this is the gradient tool so that's this one right over here. You have your paint bucket and your gradient. Um, the gradient, you can choose different different options. So you can do like black to white or color a specific color or value to clear. So that's what I like to use. I always keep it on that. 
and then I grab the color I want. And there's options here so you can do different shape. I'm going to get way more into this in the workshop, but you'll see that what it does um, is it creates this gradient. So it's really good for subtle gradations. Uh, I kind of just I filled that, but uh, so yeah, you can really use it to get fall offs. And, and when you combine it with selection tool, then you, you all of a sudden you you can make these these interesting shapes, right? Uh, I'll give you an example that's not clipped to a mask. So you'll really see how it works here. So I make a plain rectangle, and I use the gradient tool. And I can create this gradient. And then all of a sudden, it, you know, there's this neat kind of shape with a, one hard edge and one lost edge. And, and it's this full, um, not a full value range, but a very clean, smooth gradation. So you can imagine the uses. Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> yeah, I'm of painting is. by hand. And I teach watercolor a lot, too. And, you know, it's... <laughs> It's pretty much a done deal when you get it on there. Like once it's dried, it's there. Exactly. So, and you, you know, and you're working with evaporation and oh, and it's <laughs> it's not easy. And this is great because you can always undo it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's it. Nice. I mean, it's uh, Photoshop is kind of the digital art. There's an artist named Ian McKeg, um, one of my favorite artists. He designed a lot of the characters on Star Wars, and he, he's done everything. He's been around a long time. And he says, I'm paraphrasing, but he always says that the best thing about digital art is that you can change it endlessly. Like You can always change it. And the worst thing about digital art is you can change it endlessly. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, it's so true, too, because you, know, you can sit here for hours going back and forth, back and forth, and not accomplishing anything. Um, and there's another artist, uh, a, a kind of a pioneer of digital art named uh, Craig Mullins, who's, who's kind of the digital painter. Uh, he's been, he was one of the first. And he, I just uh, re-listened to one of his workshops I, I had, uh, I purchased. And he talks about, um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. He talks about uh, digital art and it being like free speech. So when you talk about watercolor, uh, if we were to use the, the free speech metaphor, when you hear someone say something on the radio, and this is, these are his words, when you hear someone say something on the radio uh, in a country where there's no free speech, if they say something, you know, very, if they're outspoken, you know that the co they could pay for that with their life. So it's very expensive to speak. Um, and if, you know, you hear someone on the radio here, they you don't even listen because they're just talking nonsense most of the time uh, because it's free. And digital art and fine art is almost a very similar kind of uh, setup because in fine art, you know, like you say, if you buy a beautiful piece of art, just watercolor paper, and you're going to put that down and, and you're going to spend the time to prepare it and then commit your pigment to it, it's expensive. So you know that when you're, when you're saying something with that, you're – you know you've thought about it and it means a lot to you. Whereas with digital tools, it's kind of like a country with free speech where you can say whatever you want because it doesn't really cost you anything. Um, so you get, it's kind of, you have to wade through a lot more, uh, I guess, uh, less meaningful uh, work uh, gets out there, I think, because it's less, okay. there's less respect for um, what goes into it, perhaps. But that's not saying it's bad or good. It's just that's that's a, a way to, to observe the differences. I thought that was really a, an astute metaphor. Interesting. They, they, yeah, it's, it's both the best and the worst thing about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> like you were saying. Yeah, interesting. I like uh, the freedom, though, it, it that is, I see it is. It's great. what you can do. And <laughs> even just being able to flip it backwards. Like, I used to take my artwork and, you know, look at the reflection in the mirror because yeah. I'm trying to get some uh, objectivity. It's so easy oh, digitally. Wow. Well, and you think of free speech, you know, if, keeping with that metaphor, it's a great thing, right? None of us would not want free speech, so it's pretty pretty cool that we, we have these options now. And I, and I think going into, if you want to go into this uh, for a living, this industry, you know, when, when Photoshop came around, there were guys in concept art who didn't, want to get with Photoshop. They thought, no, you know, they're purists and they want to keep doing what they're doing. And 90% of them didn't work after that, right? They, they stopped working because they, they couldn't find work for 
um, the speed that they worked at or the tools that they worked with, people weren't hiring. And it seems, right. unfortunately or not, it seems to be the case now that if you don't know the digital tools, you're not, you're probably not going to work unless you're, uh, you know, um, of course, if you're a gallery artist, is a whole different story, but uh, unless you're some prodigy that, you know, and you're amazingly fast, then it's very, very unlikely that you're going to be able to okay. sell yourself without digital tools. Interesting. So, so that brings us to a question that I'm curious about, and, and maybe some students or their parents might be curious about. Do you, in fact, make your living solely as being a concept artist? Well, I, I wouldn't know. I don't make my living as a concept artist, but I, I do make my living as an illustrator. As an, uh, as an illustrator. Okay. Yeah. That, so it's combined uh, concept and illustration. And, and yeah, this and so is, it, I, this is your livelihood then. It, it is now. Yeah, it's it's a, a fairly recent thing, but uh, it's 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 been a process. And um, right now, the work is consistent, and it's that owning your own business, uh, scary <laughs> phrase, starting a family thing. But you know, that's that's uh, it's, that's what it is. Great. And how long has it been that you've been uh, having uh, illustration and concept art as your major source of income? That's my full-time career. It's it's just within yeah. this last year. That's my full-time income. But okay. Um, how long did it take you to get to that point? Uh, and here's the thing. Um, again, going back to my education, it took me probably longer. Like if I had, if I had been able. You know, I, we talk about this sometimes. But if I had been able to take that opportunity to, to, to but when I was accepted into shared animation, to to go, um, I probably working in a studio now. Um, and saying that, I probably wouldn't have had my son, and you know, different things wouldn't have happened that have happened in my life that I'm also very grateful for. Um, but uh, my my journey, because it was so kind of scattered, and I wouldn't wish that on him. You know, people. Uh, there's a, an online school. You should you should plug this one in. Um, the Watts uh, Atelier, Jeff Watts, and you can look him up on YouTube. I really really like his teaching. Uh, he's phenomenal. And so I studied at his online school as well. And this is an atelier, so you're getting it's not digital. You're getting your your classic training in in uh, drawing with Conte and uh, painting, oil painting, and gouache, and and all of that. And Jeff Watts talks about uh self-education and i agree with him he talks about it being you know it's a it's a a lot of people are self-taught or are, are proud of it and i don't think it's something to be proud of it's, it's just kind of an unfortunate circumstance um because it's a harder path to take it takes longer um it, you take longer to realize your mistakes if you ever do uh, you develop bad habits because there's no one to stop you from developing those um so i think what's kind of allowed me to survive in a self-taught manner is going uh, going out and reaching out to these people like Greg Manchester and, and who can correct short-sightedness that I don't know I have, right? Um, so it's it's finding, it, so it's not really self-taught, it's more, it's self-directed uh, in the sense that I'm, I'm directing myself to different people who can help me uh, level up, really, how I like to call it. So it took me, sorry, back to your question. I, I'm, <laughs> I avoid tangents in my artwork like the plague, but I go off on tangents when I talk pretty much all the time, yeah. every time. And, so, and I think I'm distracting you from your painting because you just, know, it's hard yeah. to talk and paint at the same time because I'm, I'm painting just you over this again <laughs> yeah. and again. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, that's called licking it. As an oil painting, you know that when you just... It. You lick and, and yeah, because it, it does. I mean, it takes all your attention, right? When you're designing, yeah. You, you basically, you want to find your shape. And what I was doing there was just unconsciously knowing that it wasn't looking good, but just not really doing anything to fix it. <laughs> just yeah. kind of, and, and there's digital yeah. for you, right? Because I can do that. If I did that with an oil painting, I pretty much have to wipe it off and start again now. Uh, <laughs> so that's digital for you. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Well, this has yeah. been really interesting, Anthony. Um, so, and, and actually it leads us to one of the things we teach in our camp that we start with is how do we focus 
visually is we can't talk and draw at the same time. Mm -hmm. That was a demonstration. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh... <laughs> we can't multitask. We need to, to focus. So th those are some things we're going to learn how to do too early on in the camp is, is how to really get that keen fo visual focus and maintain it. Um, so now, any uh, parting words for the students that you'd want to share? Uh, no, I mean, I guess just thank you for your interest. Uh, I'm, I'm really thrilled to have an opportunity to, to share some of the things I've, I've spent so many of the, the last six or seven years now, I guess, learning um, and practicing and, and developing into a, a career based on my passion. So uh, yeah, right. thanks for your interest. And I really look forward to meeting you. Great. So, you know, and I think it's really interesting, Anthony, uh, for students to know, you know, there's more than one way to approach a career because not everybody has the freedom that like we were talking about freedom of speech, but we don't all have equal freedom to be able no. to go to college or university. Definitely not. And if we have determination and hard work and we learn somehow so, like you didn't learn in a vacuum though you did have people no, who guided you absolutely and a lot of hard work and so you know it's possible more than one way to have a career in the arts and it might have taken you a little longer um to really start being fully employed but then maybe you spent less than a student who study full-time so there's yeah. there's whatever way you want to do it there is a way, and there's lots of resources today, and and we're one of the resources, one of the stepping stones to get there. And I love that we can hear from Anthony his story of how he is working as an illustrator and a concept artist with minimal schooling, but still getting those skills. And uh, and so we're going to hear some different stories of on our open house day, and Anthony will be there too to show us his work. But our open house day starts with Mike L. Murphy, who is a Warner Brothers um, animator, and he's worked for Disney and loads of other major studios. And he's going to teach about the top five studio skills for a successful career. So his main thing is being a mentor, but to graduates of programs, how do you get the first, second, third job that can really um, skyrocket your career? And so he's going to be teaching those skills. We actually get to have a live one hour Q&A with him. Uh, we're Skyping him in from California. And we've got three full hours of instruction with Mike um, via video and uh, workbooks and sketch exercises. <laughs> so he's going to so get great. us on a really great start. And then also, um, we're having Michael Byers. He's um, a major Canadian illustrator who also went to Sheridan College. He was a student there when I was teaching there. <laughs> and he's made a remarkable career for himself um, by choosing to study. But he had a certain way of approaching his education, both in school and then when he graduated. And he's got a really inspiring story of how you can make sure that you work in your field. He's one of seven graduates from his year that's working in his field. When, so it's a, it's a pretty compelling story. 2,000 people applied in his year, 150 were accepted, 70 of those graduated, one, and, and then seven of those 70 are working in their field today. Wow. And there's a reason for that. And he's going to tell us about part of what that reason is and what his story was and how his attitude and what he chose to do while he was studying. And then when he graduated, how did he make that happen for himself? He's been very successful. Again, he's a full-time illustrator. And he's been in some major publications, including the New Yorker magazine, many That's times awesome. and lots of great you know, album covers and all of that, yeah. um, like you were doing there too for uh, Monolith. Um, so a really great inspiring story and attitude about education and work is really a great thing we're going to learn from him. And then we have a visual effects artist who kind of did something a bit similar to you. Um, hang on, I can't take that call right now. <laughs> 
stop. How do you make it stop? There we go. Um, <laughs> he, sh this lady studied at a school called the Lost Boys. It's a one-year program, and she's been having an amazing career. Um, so it's a little more money, but one year, very intensive wow. training in a small school, kind of like an atelier, but for visual effects artists. Nice. So that's going to be fun to hear about. Um, so there's lots of different ways to get to where you want to go. Uh, and we're going to see Garth Laidlaw's work. He's our animation instructor, what he's, yeah, he's been great. doing. Yeah. We've got David Caesar. Um, amazing detailed artist who studies uh, both as an illustrator and, and as an animator, but he's really a fine artist yeah. and very dedicated to the purity of his work and what he feels is important for him. Wonderful instructor. He'll be teaching about the portrait. Um, and we've got Meredith Blackmore, an award-winning oil painter, teaching us some fundamentals about color and painting. Uh, you'll be able to see my architectural illustration and uh, some of the work I've done in my varied career. And uh, let's see, I think that covers everybody that's coming to Open House. Oh, we've got some students and what their stories are of how they've been able to get accepted and be able to see their portfolios. So the Open House Day is a great way to get an introduction into how to have a career in the visual arts and various um, education paths in how you might prepare. Yeah, uh, so and Anthony's knee is going to be a part of this. So, and this is our first year bringing you on. So yeah, we're really I'm happy thrilled. to have like you, an illustrator great. and a concept artist, working with us because mm -hmm. I think the students just find it really um, kind of exciting to be able to learn how to really use the tools of Photoshop effectively. And right? It's pretty important now. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, and it's a long that. learning curve. Do you find? It, it can be. Uh, I think. I mean, it's hard. For, I guess it's hard for me to gauge because I started so long ago. I was. I was the guy in high school uh, in computer class who every day the teacher would have to come by and, and tell me to turn off my computer because I was on Photoshop and we were supposed to be learning typing or uh, HTML. Um, and so I was in that sense. I wasn't a bad student, but I. I mean, I was a bad student, but I. Uh, I, it because it's because it was my passion. I was so enthralled by it. So I really started learning Photoshop at a young age. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but so yeah, I guess it, the guys, look at that beautiful painting now. He's been the, working on it. The learning curve doesn't have to be so big. I think that's kind of what I hope to to get across um, is to show you a few key techniques, and then with Google, man, the sky's the limit. <laughs> you know, anytime you're stuck, you just Google it, and you'll be all right. So, yeah, we can talk about Great. all that. So I think the last thing I want to leave people with is that it, you can. there's still spots in Anthony's class and there's still spots in the summer camp in general. So you can contact me at portprep.com. Just email me at info at portprep.com or go to portprep.com and go to the summer camp tab. Click on that. You'll see um, all this uh, artist's work that are teaching, all the classes, videos about it. And you can register right there online or email me. There's a little submission form and I can look at your work and help you figure out what to take. Uh, we do still have spots available. It's filling up quite quickly because it starts next Monday, but it's two full weeks, nine hours a day, three classes per day during the week, two classes per day on the weekends. We've got figure drawing, everything. And we're hoping that a really amazing figure drawing instructor is going to join us. So stay tuned because then everybody's going to want it to take it because he's so amazing. Oh, I'll be there. So we're hoping. And we've got some great figure drawing instructors, but we're just hoping to bring this other guy in. So he's super amazing. Um, and so for Anthony, if you're saying, well, you know, I'd really love to be able to study with Anthony, that looks really interesting. Um, we, You can come in person to the camp that's in Guelph, Ontario, Canada. Um, we do have lodging for out of town students if you can get here. So don't let that, um, you know, dissuade you. But another way is just to tune in using Google Hangouts so you can still register for the class and participate through screen share. It's a really great way to learn. Garth and I teach students all over the world this way, and we've helped students get accepted into major art colleges all over the world. 
even some of those really big name schools in the United States like RISD and um, Ringling and uh, what else? Pratt, Parsons, SVA, you know, in Our Canada, OCAD, U, Sheridan, Ryerson, uh, Emily Carr, you know, Humber, Seneca, all these great schools. Um, and we help people either in person or in our workshops or summer camp or online lessons like this. So if you want to learn with us, there's always a way. We even do work trades with students who don't have the funds. So please don't be shy. Contact us and we're eager to help you. We just love, we want to support artists being what they are and being able to work at their trade like Anthony is and like I am and Garth and everybody teaching at the camp. Okay. So thanks so much for your time, Anthony. Yeah, no problem. So you might be able to meet this guy on open house day as well as on the last day, last two days of camp, August 6th. No, wait. Yeah, 6 and 7. And so, Anthony, your camp, how much is it? Your, your one is a little bit more than some of the others because it's a bit more intensive. So that if you don't have experience with Photoshop, we do have a video that you can rent for $20. It's an hour video with Garth Laidlar, our animation instructor. And he can teach you the basic tools if you don't know them yet because we want you to jump right in with Anthony and be able to do more with the time that he's spending with you. Um, I guess I should have known how much your, it costs. <laughs> I better too. look it up. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so and if you bring people in, Anthony, um, it's a great thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I really like to bring in really good instructors. I like to pay them very well. And uh, any, if you bring people in to me, then you know you're going to get a commission. And if you, a student, bring somebody to me, so you sign up and you bring a, another student, um, you get benefits from that too, um, either bonus videos or a discount. So invite your friends. We want uh, to help Anthony teach you guys how to have a career like he's had. Now, let's see. How much is your workshop? You're way at the bottom. So you got to scroll way to the bottom of portprep.com summer camp page to find Anthony. Way, 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 way down. Let's see. Weekend to digital. Okay. So the two day digital painting workshop is 115 US, no, Canadian dollars. 115 Canadian dollars plus HST. So, and we've got some, um, we have an American student studying with us too. It doesn't matter where you're from. You can tune in and do this, okay? Um, so if you want to take just the Saturday, if you're busy on Sunday at $75, it starts 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. And then on Sunday, we're taking another kick at the can for a half day, well, just two hours, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Because you might want to go home and, you know, do some more painting and then bring that back and be able to ask Anthony some questions, okay? Definitely. So, great. And if you have questions, email me. If you look at the website, it tells you, if you scroll down to his class, you'll see all the equipment that you need um, to be able to do this web, this uh, yeah. course. And okay. I realize, uh, sorry, there's been some questions from students uh, regarding equipment. And it doesn't, I, I mentioned uh, Wacom like, uh, tablets and Photoshop. It doesn't have to uh, be Wacom. It can be any any graphics tablet with pressure sensitivity is okay. And Photoshop, um, that's what I'll be teaching. But if you really want to learn, uh, the principles are there across uh, some other software too. But definitely Photoshop is uh, is where I'll be teaching. That's what I know, so that's what I'll teach. All right? Right. Okay. Thanks, cool. Anthony. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> You're welcome. I look forward to your teaching with us. Bye for now. Bye-bye.